Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we came back to the Reach, after leaving Albion, to visit a funeral that was going on at New Winchester for the incautious driver's father. We also poked around looking for the earnest agitator, learned a lot about suns, and got a bunch of quests to do some more research into them. Now I want to start doing all the other things that I need to do in the Reach, which is basically visit practically every place to follow up on a bunch of quests. First, I want to do Carillon, Lustrum, and the Nature Reserve. Um, I want to... Here's how it worked out. I want to go to the Nature Reserve to do the Incautious Driver, to return the Verdant Fragment and all that stuff and get it out of the Incautious Driver. But there's also a prospect that I have. I actually got it here off camera at New Winchester. A prospect to deliver five barrels of hours. Unfortunately, in my bank, there was only four barrels of hours. And I really want to finish it, so I figured, well, I'll go to Lustrum, because they export hours. And then I'll go to the Nature Reserve, but then I realized Lustrum is so close to Carillon, and I also have a prospect to deliver honey for Carillon. They want five gourds of Chorister Nectar. I ironically also had only four out of the five in my bank. But the good thing is Carillon exports Chorister Nectar, so it's one of those weird ones where you can just buy the thing they want to buy from you at the place that they're buying it from you. It's weird. So, Carillon first, and then Lustrum, and then the Nature Reserve. Should probably turn on my port reports while I'm here too, right? How many do I have? Probably just the one. Yeah, just the one for, uh, I forgot the name of it. Port, Port Prosper. I was thinking like Port Fortune? No, close. And I wonder if there's... I wonder if anything with the Tacities can advance from here, now that we're going to Albion and stuff like that. Is there any more business we can do with the Tacities? Can we help them out more? Doesn't seem like it. This is the same description as we got when we first came to her. Yeah, okay. Homestead. Trade supplies for Bronzewood? Yeah, got plenty of supplies. Bronzewood is worth a heck of a lot more. Thank you. Damn it. <laughs> Pry precious stones from its carapace. I forgot how much I get for this. 28 sovereigns. That's terrible. You lash the beast alongside your engine and set to work with picks and chisels. Soon you have accumulated a bucket full of glittering stones. Good old Carillon. As far as story stuff, I know at the least one of the things we can do is take the half empty glass. Yeah, that's their name, right? The half-empty glass. Think? No, no, no. The half-glass empty is their name. God, I love that name. Need to take the half-glass empty to the uh, devils to try to fix their soul, because remember they wanted to be shattered to drink the sun's light. But going to see if we can help them without killing them. Buy a gourd of nectar, full price. It's fine, we'll get more back for it. Turning it in as a prospect. That's a really big profit. Plus 150 experience and one otherworldly artifact. Guess I might as well buy these, right? Eh. Ah, I'll, I'll always do that last, just in case I get stuff while I'm doing story things. Let's get a board report. And let's deliver the half glass empty. When you explain the empty's predicament, your rescued prisoner attracts a swarm of attention. Yeah, it's gotta be uh, probably a case they've never seen before. The presiding deviless descends to meet your rescued prisoner. She taps his glass eye with a fingernail. 
a sun-touched soul, she muses, an eager flash of tongue at her lips. Yes, we can take good care of him. The devils will care for him now. Two attendants wheel out of bed and gently help the empty climb in. A listless farewell. Your last words with the empty are awkward and brief. He was never much of a conversationalist. He thanks you, and he seems happy to leave it at that. When you return to your train, you find a nervous young man waiting outside with a barrel of souls. The devilless told me to deliver these to you, he says. Said it was a fair trade for such a patient. Thousand experience and two selections of immaculate souls. Thank you. I hope I can follow up on how their treatment is going. I hope this isn't just the end of it, but it sounds like it might be. Oh, right. The candlelit soiree with the inconvenient aunt. The one where all these people coming together are supposed to put their uh, en enmity, I think the word was, behind them. But uh, I don't think Elizabeth is going to do that, so this could be very fun if we're supposed to just kind of kiss ass and pretend nothing's wrong, but we're not going to. <laughs> she insists that it will do, do you good. Come on, she says, a fierce gleam behind her spectacles. This should be fun. A penitence ball. Your aunt, chattering constantly, guides you through the ash-gray stone chambers of Carillon. Eventually, you reach a little door in one of the less traveled backways. Your aunt knocks thrice. The door swings open. A severe, scarred old woman peers out. Bunty, your aunt cries happily. After a brief introduction, Bunty ushers you inside. You emerge into a room with a high, mirrored ceiling. Its dark paneled walls are illuminated by dripping crimson candles. Revolutionaries consort with ministry auditors. Devils drink with bright-eyed ministers of the new sequence. A famous tackety general is highly occupied with a distinguished admiral. What has she brought you to? A mirrored ceiling. The whole ceiling is just a mirror? Hmm, look for your aunt or mingle. Look for your aunt. She's disappeared into the crowd. This does not bode well. You duck between a pair of drunken lords toasting their family feud and follow the sound of boiled sweets being crunched. You're led deep into the bowels of the chamber. Your aunt is shamelessly eavesdropping on a conversation at the foot of a staircase. Her expression is aghast. You make out the words, The St. Dunstan's Rendezvous, the company of four, before your aunt notices you. Let's get out of here, she says, hurrying you away. You've attended a scandalous soiree with your aunt. The St. Dunstan's Rendezvous, the company of four. Uh, none of those names mean anything to me. Can we go speak with them? Question your aunt. What was all that about St. Dunstan's? What got her so shaken up at Carillon? In Her Majesty's Service. When I was a gal, I used to do a bit of spying for the crown. I've been out of the trade for years, but I couldn't help but overhear an intriguing conversation. People rarely pay attention to ladies of my age. She gives you a look as though daring you to disagree. They said revolutionaries helped our government conquer Albion. They mentioned a secret rendezvous at St. Dunstan's between four representatives. A new sequencer, a revolutionary, and two members of Her Majesty's government. I have to get to the bottom of this. It is my duty, she tilts her chin defiantly. I have a friend at Port Prosper who owes me a favor. And we can get lunch. Well, this is really interesting. I'm not sure exactly who these revolutionaries are. Exactly. But when it comes to helping our government conquer Albion, I'm pretty sure what they mean by conquer Albion is kill the sun. Because the sun in Albion was killed by an experimental weapon. Remember? Heard that somewhere. So they helped them? They helped them kill the sun? A new sequencer is one of them. The sequencers are obsessed with the clockwork sun, right? But of course the clockwork sun didn't exist 
until years after the sun died. Hmm. I'm intrigued. Overgrown shrine. Contemplate the statue. Right, we've seen this before. Statue is the raw material of nightmares, which is comforting to us. Our terror is reduced. Can I speak with the presiding deviless about anything? No. Looks like I can help another one of the penitents at Kirillin, the penitent nurse. There's also the hellish penitent, but to do that we need to gain entrance to... I think at least one of these two things that we can't get into, the sand garden or the terrace of glass statues, need a flickering soul or a clear soul. But the penitent nurse, I can do their penitence with one deprivation and one ordeal. Let's do ordeal first. We've been all these places before, so let's just Go right through it. 33% chance. That's terrible. Oh, nice. A dandy has been at odds with a brother for the past decade and more. As a corrective, he's been made to sit at the top of a tall pole. The supervising deviless makes notes. <laughs> right, and the other one is penance deprivation. Need to perform the ritual purification to be able to enter. 89% chance of success. Success. Visit the bell garden. Gain a penance of deprivation. It's possible I already have one, actually. Let me see. I don't. Failure. A surgeon specializing, specializing in nasal complaints knew of a cousin's criminal activities, but chose not to report them. For the penitent's own good, he bathes seven times a day and cleans their teeth fourteen times, has a shaved head beneath a paper cup, and eats nothing containing mushroom. A goat farmer was known to eat insects and worms in a spirit of curiosity. As a corrective, he's not allowed to hear, hear music or see the light of day. <laughs> oh, come on. A zookeeper suffers, suffers from an unaccountable peckishness. He may sit only on one buttock, never squarely on both. Oh, that's horrible. Come on. A housemaid was a reckless insomniac. In order to correct it, she's been given a regimen of bowing each time the seventh bell rings its change. Ah. Donate a mix of deprivation and ordeal to the nurse. What good is control if it doesn't come with strength? Fiercer. You donate your penance to her. She struggles. The penance was, was painful to perform and it is not easy to receive either. On the way down the staircase, she tells you about the hospital where she used to work. Administrators who stole from the medical funds. Doctors who drank before surgeries. Some meant well. Some meant poorly. I can't say I did much about it. I didn't want to be too harsh with the ones that were trying, she says. But I should have done, for the patient's sake. I have an experience and a savage secret. Okay, that's all I can do for now. Let's buy all these seeds. There's a bargain. Now we're filled up. And off to Lustrum. The Widdershins. Signal the wreck. Yeah. 100% chance of success. Success! Surprise. Dispatch a boarding party. The retriever survivor is too weak to work, but will share their hoarded supplies with you. I think they need some help. There you go. I got your back. This one's still alive. Listen to its last complaint. Grumbly cantankery. The cantankery emits a long flatulent eruption. It sounds as if someone had punctured a hippo. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that's, his, that's his last complaint. Someone puncturing a hippo. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. I just imagine everybody, like, I just imagine the tankery saying something like, Come closer. You know, like, I could, I'm on death's door. You gotta come closer so I can whisper it into your ear. Come closer. And then just... Lustrum. I think we have somebody to drop off here, actually. The person that we got from Port Prosper like half a year ago. And we also have some sort of request to do here. I don't remember off the top of my head. Let's turn in our seared nameplates. Charred nameplates, rather. Turn in three at a time. Turn in 12. I can do that. Oh, I've got 13. Nice. For a moment of inspiration, Sweet Jane sits on a hoard of stories. Has she anything you could use? Or turn in all of them. Let's go for the inspiration. New total, five moments of inspiration. That's actually more than I thought I had. Her smile is swift and savage as the murder of princes. I've walked in blood in my time. What's that line from Macbeth about the seas in Carnadine? She shakes her head, glances wistfully at a few old playbills stuck in the walls behind her. All right, once I was once captured by the stovepipes. I'd love to hear that story. All oh, right, I have one more to turn in. Sure, I think it's only like 25 sovereigns. Oh, 50. Yeah, not much. But I'm not exactly going to be coming back here often. Let's get a poor report. Let's drop off a settler. They're going to be probably not too happy with me. They've arrived at their destination. Whether or not they still wish to be here is another matter entirely. Things might have changed while you're in transit. You may not be rewarded as well now. Lustrum sings its own song. The mines ring, the caverns howl, the machines roar. No one will look the settler in the eye. His scowl could shatter glass. We're late, he says. I can only hope the people of this good settlement are less prone to tardiness than you. Here are your wages. I bid you good day. Still got a hundred sovereigns from it. That's fine. Let's enjoy a cup of tea at Murgatroyd's Golden Tea Shop. Nothing new to talk with them about, right? Trade two uncanny specimens for a savage secret. Still don't want to do that because I have a million savage secrets. Oh no. Gotta go all the way back there to go to the tea shop. Let's have Empress's favor. They reduced our terror by quite a bit. Ah, the mountain is currently singing. It's a celebration. Let's join. Reduces our terror by a bit. I've already seen all these descriptions before. Someone told me that... I think they told me if I, like, finish mining my claim, something interesting might happen. I've only mined the claim once with, I think, five people. I've just left the people here. It's not like I have a problem getting enough crew. I can always get more, and it's not that expensive. So let's assign five more crew, and then set them to set them to working. And I'll come back from before I leave the reach. I hope, if I remember. Begin mining. Return later. Does it say specifically how long? It says return in a month. Okay. I thought there was some other story thing to do here, but I guess not. All right, well, one of the other reasons I came here was to buy one more gourd of... Oh, wow, they actually have a bargain for Corister Nectar. <gasps> Wait, no. I wasn't I wasn't here to buy Corister Nectar. I will buy this, but I was here to buy their export. Just one of these. And I only have one more hold space. Dang it. Seven of these. these that's worth quite a bit. Alright, let's head over to the Nature Reserve. Where we can do a lot of story stuff. 
And also, I think we're going to make a crap ton of money. I have so many things to turn in for the research. I'm going to go past the Grave of the Silent Saint as well. I think I'll look at it again while I'm in the area. We're coming upon the Grave of the Silent Saint. Oh. <laughs> January 8th? See? Even death may die. And we also have a... Uh, uh, ar archivists. Oh, archivist egg and an archivist. Or a curator, rather. strong. The Zesty. It's <laughs> a hell of a name. Uh, stripper for repairs, thing, Definitely. 100% repaired now. Yeah, the curator's kind of running away from me now because it's so hurt. Search for treasure or take a trophy. That will substantially reduce your terror. 16%. Hmm. Just the idea of taking a trophy sounds terrible, though, even if I do want to reduce my terror. And search for treasure. I think we've done this before. Thin, translucent, and dull. Examine the collection. 86 sovereigns and a condemned experiment. A maggot squirms free while you're cutting open the net. Beneath the curator's motley collection is an unhealing wound. Blood and effluvia have encrusted its belongings. You need to wipe them down before they can be identified. There is a cast metal sort, the letter O. There is a sharpened quill from no bird you've encountered. A pot of dust which liquefies under pressure. Your engineer's hands will be stained for weeks. Let's grab the egg. Once again, I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to keep it until it breaks open and we see what's inside. I wanted to, well, not just look at this thing because it looks amazing and creepy and just wow, but also to talk about this. I know I'm eating up supplies, but whatever, it's fine. So just take a good look at this thing. I shouldn't leave my light off. My terror will go up super fast. So I knew this looked like something was living down there, like some sort of huge creature, but I couldn't really see what it was, too distorted by all this broken glass. But somebody sent me a picture in the comment of one of the videos from earlier in Early Access, when things looked a bit different in this game. And it was a picture of this place, and apparently before it didn't have this glass over it. Meaning, you could fairly easily see down to this thing. So, yeah, this is apparently a messenger, I think. This is a mouth. These things here are spiky teeth. Those are teeth. This whole thing, that's like the bottom jaw or the top jaw, and that's the other jaw. Yeah. I suppose it's called Grave of the Silent Saint because it was a messenger, and now it delivers no more messages. The Nature Reserve. Alright, first let's just get a crap ton of money turning all the research stuff. Uh, I guess we'll do this first though. Reduce terror by exploring the Nature Reserve on your own. 
now let's turn in the research. So, ants from a homestead, 300 sovereigns, stomach of a cantankery, 250 sovereigns, fungal crinoline from a mushroom meteoroid, 300 sovereigns, pen of a scribe spinster, 400 sovereigns. That is so much money. Okay. Inquire into the phlegmatic researcher's private project. Does he need anything else from you? Right, last I did, I uh, helped them return their uh, colleagues to sanity, I guess. I don't know if I actually helped the colleagues, though. I, I discovered what was causing them to go into the forest and just leave and become... What were they, I guess, obsessed? I don't know if I actually helped them, though. Distribute anti-sender propaganda. Oh, right. So I did that once. I guess it's renewable, right? So this is like to do it again. Yes. Deliver it to New Winchester. Okay. Let's go into the reserve. I think this reduces our tear as well. Quick trip. Oh, right. Sky Stories is what we get for that. Let's finish the prospect. Otherworldly artifact as a bonus. <laughs> We're getting a lot of money now. Might have enough to buy that new ship if I sell a lot of my extra stuff that I have stored in my bank. Well, would you look at that? They have hours as a bargain. I didn't even need to stop at Lustrum. Of course I wanted to, but... Yeah, weird. Very weird. I'm actually just going to buy these all right now. I've got so much hold space. Oh, did I get a port report? I didn't. Now, escort the incautious driver to the Verdant. The fragment should end the driver's obsession. I'm really curious how this is going to affect him. Start of darkness. With difficulty, you help the driver drag the remnants of the fragment to the great tree in the middle of the reserve. Once again, its buds open up, showering spores to absorb its memories into itself. You're close enough to taste some of them yourself this time an acrid, sour taste in the back of your throat. From it, an image forms in your mind, a squirming black cancer writhing in the heart of a god, a sudden darkness, light extinguished by betrayal, a single burning thought, murderer. The image fades, the edges withering from memory. The driver steps away, breathing out the last of their infestation. Their eyes no longer glint emerald, but the damper green of moss. They stand differently now, not trembling with the effort of keeping still. Your incautious driver is now judicious and will increase your iron by 10 and your affiliation establishment by two. You can appoint the judicious driver to be your chief engineer. That's really interesting. Yeah, so the unconscious driver quite literally has changed. I mean, it's changed who they are fundamentally so much that they contribute entirely different stats to your crew. That totally makes sense. So let's just go back for a second. This sounds very important. From it, an image forms in your mind. A squirming black cancer writhing in the heart of a god. Heart of a god, that has to be one of the judgments, one of the suns. Squirming black cancer, probably the fungus. A sudden darkness, light extinguished by betrayal. So one of the judgments betrayed, killing it or making its light go out. Probably have to kill it to make its light go out, unless it voluntarily stopped producing light, like apparently the one in Eleutheria has. A single burning thought, murder. Maybe one of the sons used the fungus to kill one of the one of the other sons. It's 
really interesting. Reminds me, somebody commented on one of the videos a while ago talking about, uh, well, basically thinking about how the fungus could interact with the suns or the judgments. The judgments seem to be biological, right? They seem to be actual living things. They seem to have blood, viscera, what have you. We've seen them with their guts shot open. They seem to be biological things. And the fungus can take over biological things. They can control it. They can revive it. Remember when uh, it was Madame, uh, Madame Lumiere that showed us that bird? Wasn't it a bird that she was like cooking for dinner? It was like cooked and was dead and then it just suddenly came to life? It was literally revived from death because of the fungus? So the fungus could theoretically infect the judgments potentially control them, potentially even bring them back from the dead. And there's a lot of dead sons around here. Let's go speak with them now. So, let's see. Yeah, so it both changed their stats and also gives you more stats in total. So normally you get eight stats for each person, like six veils, two iron, six mirrors, two veils, Two iron, six veils, that sort of thing. But now they give ten in total. Let's speak to them. The crew have stopped complaining when the driver takes the wheel. Changes after changes. I thought I'd miss it, the verdance. Not being alone. The invulnerability. Funny. Despite the feeling I almost died, I thought my fear could only be conquered by the thing inside of me. Now I see I was wrong. Oh, I, I know I don't have to be reckless all the time. Their hands spin on the wheel. You grab a strap and hold on for dear life as the train careens through a field of space debris, just missing the largest chunk with a perfectly timed burst of the jets. The driver grins. But some of the time? That's another story. <laughs> I think that might be the end of their, of their uh, quest line, at least so far. It was a really nice quest line. I enjoyed it. I think I'm actually going to go with the iron as well. Ten iron as opposed to six fails and two iron. I'm going to do it. The plus six fails. I I feel like I need the iron more. If we look at my stats, my iron is quite low. And my veils is so high. Removing six from my veils, I don't think is going to be that big of a deal. Because there's... I mean, there's two ways in which these stats seem to have an effect... One is that there's certain thresholds you need to meet to do certain things, like I needed 50 mirrors or higher to use the Intrepid Cavi. So I feel like as long as my fails are at 50 or above, I should meet those sorts of skill checks. The other one, of course, is just when however much you have of a skill decides what percentage chance you have of success. In that case, then any point in veils would help. But yeah, I'm going to go with the iron. Now how are we looking on stats? Plus 17. That means we have 41 iron. 41 iron, that's actually pretty high. And look at how far our hearts have come. From 1 all the way up to 26. Okay, well I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return... Um, well, I've got a lot of other quest stuff to do. Probably go to Titania, and then maybe the Circus, and then go back to New Winchester, and then we have some more business at Port Avon and Magdalene's. 